Thanks everyone for coming. Um, we had a little technical difficulty, so I'm gonna make up a little bit of time here. So I uh, wanted to uh, talk today about confronting the missing human attack surface. And today we're gonna go through a methodology on how to uncover and defend against hidden threats to your business. So a little bit about myself, uh, Steve Thomas. I'm a threat intelligence engineer for over 16 years, serial entrepreneur. Uh, I've built, bootstrapped, and sold threat intelligence companies for a while now. Uh, and I work for Hack Notice. So Hack Notice is a human-centric threat intelligence startup. Uh, we're focused on how hackers are targeting people at companies, how they're breaking into companies, what methods uh, and methodologies they use to do so. Uh, we're trusted by Fortune 5, top U.S. tier banks, industry-leading third-party experts, uh, and many more. So a, a quick show of hands. Who here has seen a traditional attack surface diagram? Maybe it has servers, websites, emails, office computers. Anyone? Great. So we all think of the traditional attack surface as the stuff that you own, right? The uh, infrastructure that you use to run the business. Unfortunately, that's only a small piece and more and more hackers are not focused on the traditional attack surface. 98% of cyber attacks involve social engineering. 95% of network attacks rely on spear phishing. So the days of protecting the ports and the server and protecting your business are over. 69% uh, of employees, they use their own device, they work from home, and they're gonna bypass your controls if your controls are too strict. So we really have to start thinking of our business uh, in terms of what do we have for a collection of employees? What assets do they have? How are they being targeted? So we call this the human attack surface and we'll cover every single layer of this attack surface today. Right in the middle is business email. So let's start there. Business email is constantly facing business email compromise, BEC for short. And if you're unaware of BEC, business email compromise has seen a surge in attacks uh, in 2022, and I'm sure we're gonna see the same trend in 2023. We're talking about tens of millions of compromise attempts, tens of thousands of complaints to the FBI. So this is happening all the time to businesses around the world. How do we deal with this? We deal with this by first party monitoring. This is monitoring our assets, our business email domain. And there's services like the one I'm gonna show you that can help you do that. So we're gonna to switch to a demonstration. Now, I can't see that TV terribly clearly, so I'm not gonna to go too in depth, but what I have here is we have uh, example.org. We're gonna monitor our domain. With Hack Notice, we can see everything that hackers are sharing about your domain. Uh, you'll see some passwords here, but our focus again is on people, the, the humans that are working at your businesses. And so as I go through here, you're gonna see names, phone numbers, job titles, addresses. These are the items that hackers are gonna use for phishing, spear phishing, and other attacks. Let's keep going. So we've protected business email. Now you have to worry about your third parties. We live in a very interconnected world. Often third parties have access and privilege. They can sometimes even be treated the same way as your employees. The big risk here is third party risk, third party data incidents. If you're unaware, it can take up to 75 days from when a third party is breached to when there's any sort of official disclosure if they even choose to disclose. Uh, you may have heard about recent changes to the SEC. We, we all hope that the SEC will lead to more people disclosing breaches faster. But with breaches, seconds count. So a lot of businesses have to come up with their own systems to monitor their third parties and to know in real time when they've been breached. Uh, breaches, third party risk, it creates a domino effect. Uh, there's some publicly uh, announced ones or, or very prominent ones. You may have heard of Okta, SolarWinds, very common data breaches that led to third parties also being breached. 
So how do we handle that? We handle that with third-party monitoring. So with Hack Notice, you can load in all of your third parties, all of their domains. Not just third parties, load in fourth parties, fifth parties. You can profile as many businesses as you want. With Hack Notice, you'll then get a, an instant report on every single third party. And what we're focused on is two things. What leak information do we have about the employees at those businesses? Do we see a spike in activity? Spikes have been correlated directly to increased likelihood of data breaches. Also, we're looking at one third party here. We can see an instant timeline of data breaches they've had in the past. So you can learn more about your third party and say, hey, my third party's had six breaches in the last 15 years. That's about one every other year. I should take that in consideration when I issue out access and privilege. Maybe I don't give them all access. Maybe I give them partial access. Maybe I keep a close eye on this third party to make sure that if they are breached again, it doesn't impact me. Not only that, but we give you a full timeline of events in real time of how your third parties are being broken into. Push notifications, instant email alerts. Our clients use us as an early warning system for incidents to make sure that they're protected, but also to make sure their supply chain is protected. So there's uh, probably a few of you that, that deal with physical problems, physical assets, physical third-party providers. Uh, there could be supply chain risk if your provider is breached. Uh, they could miss shipments, they could delay shipments. That could cause supply chain delays for you. And so monitoring for data breaches at third parties can have a real impact on how you recover from a supply chain interruption. All right, so let's keep going. Next up is end users. Now this won't apply to every business, but this will apply to a lot of businesses. Uh, banks, hospitals, if you have uh, customers where you retain any information about them, uh, that's also going to be a business risk to you. Um, big concern here is end, your, end user account takeover. Uh, even if you're just social media, those accounts are valuable. Uh, I believe it was LinkedIn put out a report maybe even a decade ago that said every LinkedIn account was worth $10 to the business. So uh, if you have end user account takeover, that can cause real lasting damage to your business, even if uh, it's not a bank, uh, but especially if you do have financial assets associated with those accounts. Um, there's been a, a massive increase in attacks for account takeover. Um, business uh, account takeover for end users, uh, it's a highly automated problem. And so um, we're looking at uh, 12 billion in account takeover losses in 2021. So this can uh, represent some real damage to your business. So what do we do about it? We do end user monitoring. So end user monitoring is uh, a controversial topic. Uh, it's been a product for decades that rarely gets used. And the reason for that is because regulation and legal often gets in the way of sharing who the end users are, right? Why should you give me your, the emails of your end users or their usernames? Uh, and can you even do it? Regulation may say you can't. So what we're focused on is we're gonna protect your end users without knowing who they are. We take hashes of usernames and email addresses. We cut those in half, it's gibberish but we're gonna give you every single password that hackers are trafficking about those usernames and emails. And then you can use those against your authentication system, find the passwords that work and very quietly reset those passwords, tell the user to pick a new one. This is zero friction, but it's also zero knowledge. All right, now we're getting further out into the outskirts of this human attack surface. These are the harder to identify assets and harder to solve problems. So we've got employees assets and their actions. That turns into advanced persistent threats against your business and transaction fraud. Transaction fraud is a huge topic. Uh, it's a growing trend this year. So uh, moving very quickly, um, you know, $4.8 million of damages based on advanced persistent threats on average. 34% uh, of companies experience damage from this. How do we handle it? We handle it with a real-time research service. 
So for a hard to pin down problem, you need a very flexible system. And the system that we have available allows you to search any identifier in real time. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself here. I put my phone number into our research service. It's gonna tell you my name, my address, my email address, my geolocation, where I used to work, old email addresses I used to have. So with us, you can take any of these identifiers you have. Maybe it's someone attacking your business. Maybe it's someone uh, trying to fraudulently lo log in. Maybe it's an executive that keeps being targeted. Whatever your identifier is, you search it, you learn what hackers have about them, and you can protect against it. All right, let's keep going. Now we're into the personal site, size, side of the business. So uh, personal websites and identities. Your employees get targeted at home. In fact, there have been some very public data breaches that happened because employees' personal email addresses got broken into, and they either had corporate assets in there or they were able to escalate privilege and get into the business. So how do you handle personal items? And, and a lot of security professionals are like, nope, not my job, I'm not gonna touch it. But that doesn't protect the business. And the way you do it is you include the employee as being a part of the solution. We have something called Hack Notice Teams. This is a personal service for every employee. The answer is you don't do a protection service for the employee, you do it with the employee. So what we have here is a small personal version of Hack Notice. You can deploy this to every employee. Your employee can say, well, these are the websites I use for work. These are the ones that I use personally. Don't, don't tell my company about the personal ones. Here's my work email address. Here's my personal one. And we protect every employee. We let them know how hackers are targeting them uh, I use T-Mobile. So T-Mobile's had a few data breaches this year. Hack Notice notifies me that T-Mobile has been broken into, what data was stolen, how that's threatening me, what sort of threats I'm going to be facing. From there, we give the employee actions they can take to protect themselves. So this is not about fear. This is about, hey, you don't wanna be a victim. You should reset your password. We'll even help employees take actions. We'll send uh, data breach investigation requests. Say, hey, I use T-Mobile. What information of mine was included in this breach? We'll send data deletion requests. We'll also send data broker takedowns. So in mass, the employees that are enrolled in this service will reach out to over 700 data brokers and we'll start sending automated takedown requests. And the whole goal here is the smaller your human attack surface is, the, the less hackers can find out about your employees and their personal information, the fewer attacks your business is gonna face and the safer your business is going to be. Not only can employees protect themselves and see their own threat intelligence, but we give an operations layer and, and there's, there's training, there's phishing, there's a lot of additional support for the employees, but we also give an operations layer to the security team. And so you're able to see, okay, my employees know that they're being targeted, they're being attacked, but who's falling behind? Who needs help? Who has a lot of outstanding risk and, and they, they aren't really paying attention to it and they need some additional support? Uh, our whole methodology here is let's help you understand your human attack surface. But let's also involve the human that's being targeted in the process. Let's give you the, the tools to know who's most targeted, and then let's make sure they're on a good path, a better path, they have the training and support they need. We give it awards of badges. We have built-in phishing that runs in the background. So here's the traditional attack surface that we started with. Here's the human attack surface that we just explored, inventoried, identified, and found threats to. And then here's all the threats that we're able to start uh, fighting and addressing. Did we solve the whole problem? No, that this, is, this is a methodology of finding how people are being targeted 
identifying their assets, their human assets, and then getting them uh, into a safer place. And that's the end of my time. So thank you all for coming today. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, if you hated everything I said, uh, I'm at Startup Booth 110, just right back there. Uh, would love to talk with you further. Thank you.